Color theory is very important to technicians who will have to match the color of repaired areas to the original finish. This is not intended to be an all-encompassing discussion of the subject, but rather a short lesson in the basics of mixing pigments. The basics, however, will give you a strong understanding of how to make the necessary matches. First, some terminology. We'll begin with primary colors. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. They cannot be obtained by mixing any other colors. All other colors are made from these three plus black and white. Secondary colors are made from mixing theoretical equal amounts of two primary colors. Orange, green, and violet are the three secondary colors. We refer to the equal mixture of the primary colors as theoretical because, in the real world, it's hard to mix exactly equal amounts of any pigments due to intensity differences, weight differences, the amount of pigment versus the amount of solvent in any given colorant, and so on. There is also a question as to which blue or red or yellow is exactly the right one. However, the theory still works. When you mix red and yellow, you will get a shade of orange. Of course, if you add more red than yellow, you'll get red-orange, or in other words, an orange that has more red in it than yellow. Colors like red-orange that are not true secondary colors are called intermediary colors. Certainly, there are far too many possibilities to list. How does this help you match colors, you may well ask. Let's suppose you have tried to match a given color, but when you look at the target color, it appears to be more orange than what you've mixed. If you have it, you can add a touch of orange. If you don't have orange, based on color theory, you know you can add red and yellow to make the match. Sometimes it's easier to match colors by working with the complementary colors. Complementary colors are located directly opposite of each other on the color wheel. For example, the opposite of red is green, so green and red are complementary colors. A very important fact of color theory is that complementary colors reduce the brightness or intensity of each other. That is because, theoretically, all colors mixed together end in gray. You may have noticed that the complementary color of any primary color is the secondary color between the two other primary colors. Therefore, when mixing complementary colors, you are mixing all colors. So when mixing complementary colors, you are reducing the intensity of the strong colors to a gray. It should be noted here that mixing all three primary colors will actually yield a brown shade due to the fact that it is not so easy to get perfect colors in perfectly equal intensities. Still, the system will work to help us adjust colors. Let's take an example. The mixed color is redder than the target color. In order to make the mixed color less red, or in other words to neutralize some of the red, we'll add the complementary color of red which is green, or one could say blue and yellow. Notice that the red was diminished by the green and that the colors now match. Finally, it's helpful to know that earth tone pigments like burnt umber, raw umber, and raw sienna are less expensive than bright primary and secondary colors. Consequently, stain manufacturers tend to use earth tones to make stains rather than the bright colors. Therefore, it is logical to use earth tone colors when trying to match finishes on furniture and cabinets. The primary colors are effective for fine tuning, but start with the earth tones to get as close as possible when creating your color match. There are two color wheels developed to help with mixing colors. The first is the Mixing Guide color wheel, which is designed to help people understand color theory. It has the praying color system on the outer wheel and shows mixtures of colors in the windows. The second wheel is called the finisher's color wheel. It is designed to help technicians understand the results of mixing earth tone colorants to get a good start at matching colors. In the center, mainly earth tone colors are displayed. The outer rim contains some earth tone colors, two of the primary colors, two of the intermediary colors, plus black and white. As you turn the inner circle, the results of intermixing the colors on the outer rim with the colors on the inner circle are displayed in the windows below. Also, the results of reducing five of the earth tone colors in various percentages are displayed on the inner circle. We suggest you use these color wheels to practice with the various colors to become proficient at color matching.